does give extra credits for the hiring of minorities and women in these oh, positions. That's great. So thank you for the uh, for the prompt from the audience. But I, but I don't want to take away from the, the two terrific women who are sitting here, who are spending their time in Teaneck, and I told Jody Foster and Pam Green, this is really a cool town. <laughs> <laughs> and so we are glad to have you, and thank you for everything that you're doing. That's well said. That's true. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say I'm a Fort Lee resident. Where are you? I'm over here. Oh, here Center. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh. Center. Oh. Hi. Um, I'm a Fort Lee resident. I'm a huge fan of your work, Ms. Foster. Um, now a fan of yours. Um, just wanted to say to um, Jody and Pam, what are you, what are you hoping that? Well, what did you take away from Ms. Blanche's story, and what are you hoping that? the next generation takes away as well. Oh, um, well, you know, there, there, you know, so many things. As I said, when I grew up in the film business, I never saw another woman, really. I, I saw the lady who played my mom sometimes, <laughs> and um, sometimes a makeup artist, but not always, and always a script supervisor. But other than that, I was surrounded by a bunch of guys. And that was wonderful. They were really, they were my brothers and fathers and they taught me everything that I know. So um, I will always be grateful for that experience, but I always felt like I was the only, I was the only girl. Um, so it really was eye-opening for me when I was a young, uh, young kid to go to the movie theater and to see those wonderful movies by, by uh, Lena Rett Miller. I don't know if you know her, uh, uh, Italian filmmaker um, who made movies like Swept Away and Seven Beauties. Uh, extraordinary movies, uh, whimsical, Fellini-esque, crazy. Just she's just an extraordinary filmmaker, and that woke me up. You know, at, how whatever it was, nine, ten years old, of saying like, "Oh, women are directors, and I want to do that when I grow up." Um, so the next, the next step for me in terms of this movie was to to realize that women have always been in the film business, and that in fact th that Anis was this pioneer who had uh, possibly made the first narrative film ever. Um, to me, that was really eye-opening, and it just, you know, recommitted me to how much I love making movies, and that I actually am a part of it. That I'm not an outsider; that I am a part of it. Her eclecticism was so fascinating too. Uh, that you know, from House Divided, you know, I mean, <laughs> that cabbage <laughs> with these babies, you know? and I and I think my son said was sitting next to me, yeah, but is that a real baby? <laughs> You know, she actually said that the mothers were worried, but then she told them not to worry about it, and she chuckled. I didn't put that in the film, but I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, Alice. I mean, it, it, her, her body of work is just amazing, and it would be so hard to pinpoint her because there was this great versatility and eclecticism. Well, her body of work is the history of cinema in a way. Hello, yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there anything in the film, was there anything you wish you'd had included in the film? That you had, had been able to include in the film. And also, what, what uh, brought you to us? Uh, I'm just going to answer the question of the lady before because she asked Jody and myself, and I just wanted to say my mission is accomplished if you were standing here and asking me a question. If I inspired you, I did my job. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the... What I, I mean, there's so much stuff. This woman is annoying. It's like so much stuff. Um, I don't miss any of it because I think in editing the film, you really learn a lot. Just because you're precious about something, if it doesn't move the story forward, it's got to go. Um, a man named Walter Murch taught me that. Um, I had a lot of uh, male mentors um, in this as well. And, and growing up and, and also in any job that I had before I got into what I do for my day job, it was a lot of men helped me. And um, Jody actually reminded me of that today uh, because it's, it's not only the job of women to help women, we need to acknowledge that a lot of men have helped and we just need to go back to them to help maybe a little bit more and get their other friends to help too. It's, it's a, a community thing. Um, 
She directed a movie called The Thief that was directed by William Moulton Marston. Um, I mean, excuse me. Wow, I'm really out of it. I need coffee. She directed a film called The Thief that was written by William Moulton Marston. Um, and if you don't know who that is, he was the creator of Wonder Woman. So he, she gave him his first shot. And because of that, he ended up uh, directing his second film with D.W. Griffith. So the film is beautiful. I show it, but I just couldn't put all that information. And how I found out about her, um, I saw a special on AMC about women pioneers in cinema and uh, with Barbara Streisand, Minnie Driver, Susan Sarandon, uh, Hilary Swink, and Shirley MacLaine was the one who talked about her. And when I heard that she had her own studio yeah. and she did all this stuff, I was like, well, I'm not surprised. And then I got angry and then that's how it all started. <laughs> I wish I could talk as fast as Tom Myers. How does he <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, I'm like, but I don't know. You have to be born in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You have wonderful, uh, the audio recording that you discovered later in the film. Earlier in the film, there's an extensive, I don't know if it's television footage, that uh, of the older uh, Alice. Uh, did I miss, what is the source of that? Was it an interview? Was it uh, family? What was, where did that come from? So, there's radio recordings, and then um, there's the tape of the daughter, and then there's a recording at the end of her life with the historian, thank God, he happened to be her neighbor in Belgium and had no idea, you saw that in the film. So that was long and that was cut down. Um, and then the footage, there's the footage of her, she's beautiful, the 1957 footage, which was for French television, uh, where the guy kept cutting her off. I tried to fix that as much as I could in the film. I hated that, I hate when people do that. Um, especially with older people for some reason. Um, and then the older footage of her, interesting enough, that was covered with subtitles on her mouth and her neck. And I didn't know that because uh, it was in a previous documentary and there was a black box on it and I couldn't understand why that would be covered. So when the movie got accepted to Cannes, um, I said, well, she can't have her mouth covered with a black box, etc. So this is where the donors come in. I picked up the phone, which is something that's unusual to be able to call a donor and say it's gonna cost, you know, a gazillion dollars in this world of documentary to clean each letter off her mouth and neck. And Jamie Wolf, she said, go for it. And it took frame by frame by frame. You would never know, but the letters were on her, her mouth and her neck. So um, you get to see her speak for herself and be beautiful on camera and uh, and see her. So that's great. Mm -hmm. What happened to her? She had she had a studio. She was the boss of the studio making all these films. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? And then we hear that she's she's kind of traveling with her daughter, following her daughter as a secretary. What happened to her like financially? Was she compensated for all the work she did like a man would be? Like what, what happened with that? Uh, there were no royalties back then. And at the beginning, there was no title of director. It was like artistic director. Nothing was burned in on the film, I think, until the teens, I believe. Correct, Tom? 1912, 13, Yeah, it, it, a lot of them were uncredited. And it's the yeah. same with actors and actresses early on. No credit, and that's why it's really, you have to do a lot of research, but that was true with Alice. And the studio uh, went back up, you know, for many reasons, distribution, dealings, the industry was changing, people were moving to California. And also she was older, you know, men came in and they were coming in from Wall Street. So it really took over and, and um, the women were shoved out the back door, as we said. Um, and also, she had to kind of turn her back on cinema because she had children to raise. So you can't be an independent filmmaker divorced with no income and just gallivant everywhere when you have two kids to raise. So she put her children first. So that was part of it as well. And also, where's her resume? The films are nowhere to be found. So imagine you're an older person, you're like, oh, I made all this stuff. And she probably got looked at like, yeah, right. You know, so there was that as well. So many things were against her, if that makes sense. The personal story of Adis is so interesting um, that Pamela was able to uncover. And if you look at it, 
you know, everything was going well until, just like in New Jersey, until the film, uh, the entire film industry left and went to California because mm -hmm. of the patent issue. Mm -hmm. uh, along with everybody that went to California was her husband who left and sort of ran off with another woman and um, became a director on his own and then took credit for everything that Solax had ever done <laughs> and every movie that she had ever done. I left her with all of the children back in New Jersey and wasn't able to, didn't give her any money. Um, and she had to fend for herself back in New Jersey with, their, with her company that was now starting to go down. Uh, she eventually ended up move, having to move back to Europe with Simone, her daughter, who lived with her for the rest of her life. I mean, that's really amazing. Um, and Simone had all these different jobs, including during the war, um, and basically just kept carting her mom with her wherever she went. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's getting late. How about two more questions that work for you guys? Yeah. Okay. I just a quick one. I, I, first of all, thank you, thank you so much for bringing this to the screen. Um, just like Jody, when I was in college, Elisa's name never came up. I did my master's thesis on filmmaking, starting in Fort Lee. Wow. I went throughout Fort Lee to various stops. And I never came across her name in wow. any of my studies. And so thank you so much for, for like opening my eyes and everybody's eyes to this woman who, who's just magnificent. Well, it's patently obvious. We don't want to leave, you know. <laughs> tell tell your, your classmates if you have a reunion and if there's any professors around, tell them as well. Yeah, that's right, right. You know, because oh. that's how it travels. Okay. You have the distinction of having the last question. Hi, Pearl. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, I know we love documentaries and please keep making them, but how amazing would it be to spend an entire series, hours and hours, week after week, watching Alice in her life? Are you, are you brewing something on the narrative side so we could spend more time with her? Well, as Ross would say in Friends, we're on a break. <laughs> 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 yeah, I need to take a break because um, I never thought about making a documentary, even though my friends and professors said I should. I joked, I was like, no, I'm going to be a businesswoman, and I'm, I never even thought about directing. And then I just wanted to be a narrative director, and then this came along. So kind of need a break, and um, yes, and um, that would take a lot of thought because... I would want to do a good job and the reason why it took so long is because somebody's life it's somebody's life it's very fragile and um, you just you want to make sure you do it right for the person but also everybody who supported you along the way mm -hmm. um, I wanted to tell you Jody you had the most beautiful French accent. Oh, yes, it was very, it was wonderful to listen to you speak in French. Yeah. Um, so, uh, how great was this? Um, <laughs> thank you all for coming. Um, well, before we leave, oh, yes. we'd like yes, to make Tom, a presentation. Sorry, before sorry, we leave, sorry, sorry, we'd like sorry, to make sorry. a presentation. My apologies. Uh, we have two presentations to make on behalf of the Barrymore Film Center and the Fort Lee Film Commission. We've been doing this for over 15 years. And I'm going to give the first one. Excuse me. Now, recipients in the past who received this Barrymore Award, we started giving out this award when the Barrymore family's house was destroyed in, in 2001. That's when we started this film commission. Little did we know that we have a film center named after that family so many years later. Uh, former recipients have been, or uh, have been uh, Thelma Schumach, or multiple Academy Award winning, film editor, most of her work with Martin Scorsese, Celeste Holm, people like that. But this year, I'm gonna just read this because we're so proud to make this presentation. The 2019 Barrymore Award presented to acclaimed filmmaker Jodie Foster for a lifetime of work in front of and behind the camera, most recently as narrator of the documentary Be Natural on cinema pioneer Alice Guy Blachet of Solak Studio in Fort Lee, New Jersey, presented on November 17, 2019. Thank you for all you do. Birthday 
present for me. Oh. Well, happy birthday from all of us. Now we have one more presentation to make. And the date differs here because we want to make this our first presentation of 2020 because that's an important year for us opening the Barrymore Film Center. You're very important to us, but we wanted to do 2019. 2019. But Pamela, who's worked so hard uh, on this project and many others and has become along the way a dear friend of not only myself, but everybody from the, from the borough of Fort Lee, frankly. The Fort Lee Film Commission presents the 2020 Alice Guy Blachet Award to filmmaker Pamela Green, who in the spirit of Alice Guy Blachet of Solak Studio of Fort Lee, New Jersey, produced, wrote, and directed the documentary Be Natural about the life and times of Alice Guy Blachet, presented on November 17, 2019, uh, but in the spirit of 2020 when we opened the Barrymore yeah, Film Center in Fort Lee, New Jersey. <laughs> it says all that? Uh, Earthquakes of the American Film Industry. Like me, this plaque is verbose. But, but we have a picture of Alice here, too, and not with roses.